Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Lee's Real Talk. Sorry for the late start. Okay. Um, let's talk about the lessons we can learn from the unexpected controversies of Janet Yellen's trip to China. All right, let's get started. So one question we have is, can Yellen's visit to China bring about a rainbow in the US, in this US-China relations? Um, well, amid the ongoing tensions, uh, U.S. Secretary, Treasury Secretary Jenna Yellen conducted a four-day visit to China. Her trip was unusual as almost no one expected her trip would bring any major breakthroughs in sino U.S. relations, yet everyone had hoped for something miraculous to happen. Well, no miracles happened, uh, but there are a lot, a lot of lessons learned. When Yellen landed in Beijing, it coincided with a slight cooling weather after days of scorching heat and tor torrential rain, accompanied by the appearance of a rainbow. And her presence alongside the rainbow was trending in China. And the official Weibo account of CCTV, which is China's central television, considered it a, a good omen. They claim that it serves as a reminder that sincere engagement and mutual respect are essential for clear skies after a rainy U.S.-China relations. What also became hot topics in the media while she, um, oh, when she was there, were his were her handshakes at the airport with the welcoming Chinese official, and the handshake lasted almost twenty seconds. Then she had um, she made a three bow like. Po postures, yeah. Some say she bowed. Some people say no, it was not a, a real bow. So I call that bow-like po postures when she was greeted with uh, the Ch China's vice premier. Last but not least, her dinner or lunch, uh, I think it was lunch, her lunch with the nine Chinese female economists caused a storm in China. So tonight we'll talk about, uh, first of all, we'll quickly go through the expectations from both the Chinese and, and the Americans um, for her trip. And then we'll talk about did Yellen accomplish her goal? And then was Beijing happy with her visit? And then we'll talk about the unexpected controversies and the lessons we can learn from them. So what did, the, what did China and the U.S. each want from this trip? Well, for the United States, unlike its ri rival during the Cold War, the Soviet Union, the interactions between the U.S. and China in terms of economics, technology, trade, and international politics are much more intertwined in terms of the financial involvement of, um, of the two countries in each other's market, U.S. companies have investments of over $200 billion in China. And by the end of 2020, the value of stocks and bonds held by U.S. investors in Chinese entities reached a staggering $1.2 trillion. And China held over $2.1 trillion worth of U.S. securities. So therefore, despite the increasing competition and confrontation between the two countries, stabilizing the American economy um, is crucial for the Biden administration ahead of the 2024 election. The administration wants to help American businesses to have a favorable business environment in China and also help secure import of low-cost Chinese goods to alleviate inflation. So the same situation applies to China. Uh, prior, prior to Yellen's visit to China, on July 3rd, the Chinese ambassador to the U.S., Xie Feng, met with her in Washington. And Ambassador Xie urged the U.S. to attach great importance to and address China's major concerns. This mainly refers to the high trade, uh, the, the trade tariffs. Um, as well as the U.S. technological sanctions and product bans on Chinese companies. Um, do you know that the number of Chinese companies on the U.S. Treasury Department's blacklist has exceeded 1,000? Um, so that's obviously uh, a major agenda item for the Chinese. 
Some people even believe that Beijing wants to leverage Yellen's influence on Wall Street in order to exert Wall Street's influence over Washington. So, let's talk about what did Janet Yellen's visit bring to the United States and China? Did the relationship see a rainbow? From the American perspective, Janet's visit allowed the Biden administration to establish contact with senior CCP officials um, in charge of the economy. So Yellen met with the Chinese Premier Li Qiang, former Chinese Vice Premier Liu He, the governor of the People's Bank of China, which is China's central bank, Yi Gang, and the newly appointed party secretary of um, the central bank, <clears throat> Pan Gongsheng. She also met with Vice Premier He Lifeng, who oversees commerce and finance. She had a banquet with Zhou Xiaochuan, who was formerly the, the governor of China's central bank for 16 years. Yes, I think it's 16 years. So this was the main purpose of her visit, to meet with China's new economic team and understand what has been happening in China. The most important aspect of her trip is the opportunity to explain the U.S. de-risking strategy, right? It used to be decoupling, now it's de-risking. Um, Yellen had, had previously stated that her hope to, um, she, she had described that her hope um, is to alleviate China's concerns about the U.S seeking decoupling. But during the, the this trip, she even avoided using the term de-risking. Instead, she soft, softened it further by emphasizing a diversified supply chain, which aligns with China's long-term policy goals. Um, I think the, yeah, it, it seems that they walk, they, they walk back from decoupling by calling the strategy de-risking and now she even sort of walked back from <clears throat> calling it de-risking and um, just emphasized on a diver building a diversified supply chain. Um, and then the Biden administration has insisted that the recent re restriction on high-tech exports to China are primarily for U.S. national security. Um, so Yellen avoided discussing the tariff issue that concerns the CCP the most, which is seen by some Americans as an achievement for her visit. So her lack of uh, discuss, discussion on the tariff was, was her um, achievement. Um, be that's because she and the U.S. Secretary of Commerce, um, um, Gina, Gina, Rem, I think her last name is Raimondo, Raimondo, am I pronouncing it right? Um, both advocated for reducing tariffs in the face of the 2024 election and growing anti-CCP sentiment in, in America. I believe the Biden administration is unlikely to ease tariffs. So beyond that, Yellen, you know, uh, raised several concerns, the China's unfair economic practices and coercive actions against American companies. She addressed the U.S.-Russia-Ukraine conflicts, expressed concerns about China's announcement to control the, the export of the, of the two rare metals used in semiconductor making. And then she called on the CCP to continue market-oriented reforms. I mean, these are, from the Chinese perspective, this almost like cookie-cutter um, American plea, plea, right? Okay, so now you probably are already all familiar with that. But now let's talk about, did Beijing accomplish its goal with Janet Yellen? Well, we can tell that Beijing is quite pleased with her visit. Um, because the CCP's official English media outlet, Global Times, praised her, praised her visit to China, stating that, um, um, said, it says, from Yellen's conclusion, we can see that her understanding of Sino-U.S. relations is overall pragmatic, rational, objective, and balanced, with unique insights and a balanced perspective as an um, economic expert. That's quite positive. 
right? And the Chinese Ministry of, of Finance also stated that meetings with Yellen um, were candid, pragmatic, in-depth, and constructive. So it seems that the Beijing authorities have gained something from Yellen's visit, although we don't know the details. I believe the main benefit is a political one. Um, it, because Xi Jinping needed to strike a positive note with regard to sino us relations to stabilize um, domestic conf confidence in the economy, right? And also to capitalize on nationalism, which is always important for him um, in maintaining domestic stability. So on that note, Yellen's accidental bow to He Lifeng which resonated well with the nationalist Little Pinks, um, is value add to Beijing. Um, and I will address this later. Um, but the essence of the confrontation of bilateral relations isn't changed. During her visit, the Chinese military um, continued using its aircraft to intimidate Taiwan. And Xi Jinping, during her visit, um, went to the Eastern Theater, the PLA's Eastern Theater Command, and made it clear to the Chinese military that they should dare to fight or not, not be afraid to fight. And these actions certainly do not bring a reassurance to the United States or the world. And Xi Jinping seemed to be avoiding meeting Janet Yellen. Because he he went he went away, <laughs> I think he ma he made no public appearances in Beijing while she was there, and the day after she left, uh, on Monday, July the tenth, uh, Xi Jinping appeared and met with the chairman of the Russian Federation Council. So I think he was out of out of town to avoid a meeting with her, and then as soon as she left. He returned. So that's just kind of a quick, a quick overview of of her visit. But I want to talk about the highlight of the of Yellen's visit, what I call the unexpected controversies of her visit, and the lessons we can learn from from them. Um, well, the first one is when Janet Yellen met with Chinese Vice Premier. Um, he Lifeng, she made a gesture that looked like she bowed to him a few times while shaking his hand enthusiastically. Um, you can Google it, and the, 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 that video is all over the internet. I think Fox News reported it, and there are other media outlets um, that have clips of that video. Um, so her bowing gesture didn't sit well with fellow Americans, some deem it unnecessary and others saying it that it clearly disregarded protocol. Um, Bonnie Glasser, a Chinese expert on um, um, who I think who pre previously served as an advisor at the US State Department said on Twitter and she said, I hope someone will tell American officials that they should stand straight when they shake hands with Chinese officials. And um, a former White House staffer, I think his name is Bradley Blakeman, said in an interview, and he goes, an American official does not bow. It looks like she's being summoned to the principal's office, and that's exactly the optics the Chinese love. Yes, the Chinese propaganda machine loved that. Um, Chinese social media com comments exaggerated her body exaggerated and over interpreted her body language. Um, her actions were blown out of proportion by the Chinese nationalists, little pinks who believe that she was begging and even kneeling before China. Um, there, the Chinese internet users are suggesting that Yellen came to China to beg for the Chinese to buy U.S. Treasury bonds. There were even rumors saying that, I should say there are, there are even rumors saying that the U.S. government promised not to intervene in, uh, in Taiwan or over Taiwan if China 
purchased U.S. bonds on a large scale. What do you think? Well, common sense tells us these claims are false. The U.S. Treasury bonds currently offer an interest rate of over what was it, five five percent, five and a quarter percent,、uh, with minimal risk. Banks, companies, and individuals worldwide are are buying U.S. Treasury bonds. Jenna Yellen doesn't need to beg the Chinese, and so I think those are all. You know, I think these are just wishful thinking that the the Chinese online trolls created, right?、Um, at the same time, these nationalist little pinks launched a verbal attack on on female economists who were invited to have lunch with Janet.、Um, And I actually I have a I have pictures yeah here here we go, so here are nine female young economists or entrepreneurs、uh, who were invited to have lunch with Janet Yellen in Beijing, and these women particularly two were blasted for betraying their country、uh, because they said there's no such thing as a free lunch. So who are these? Female economists. Well, they include、uh, Liu Qian, the econ the Economists Managing Director for Greater China,、um, who is also the young global leader of the World Economic Forum. And there's an author and、uh, by the name of Hao Hao Jing Feng,、uh, who is a science fiction writer. And、uh, she previously worked for the China Development Research Foundation, which is managed by. Uh, the State Council. It was rumored that renowned economist,、um, who is also a professor at the London School of Economics, Jin Keyu, whose father is, I think, a, the Deputy Minister of Finance.、Uh, that woman was also there, but some other people who attended the dinner or the lunch said that she was not in attendance. So, when asked why she attended the dinner. Writer Hao Jingfang replied. She said, "Because Yellen is the friendliest American official. She's always dedicated to developing friendly China-U.S. relations." Now the post is deleted. Her post saying that is deleted. That's troubling because she didn't say anything that the Beijing authorities.、Um, Saw as problematic, what she said was fine politically, right, from the CCP's perspective. So she couldn't be under pressure、um, by the Beijing authorities. The only explanation that she deleted it is that she's under tremendous pressure from the public for having attended the dinner. So she deleted it.、Um, Yellen asked her guests a few questions at the lunch, such as. Whether the downturn in the real estate market will cause economic problems, the economists explained、um, to her that the current、um, the current attitude of the Chinese government um, um, and would not hold on. Let me bring this back. She she、um, the economists explained to Jenna Yellen. The response or the attitude of the Chinese government, saying that the situation、um, was manageable. Now, I think questioning questioning any topic in such a highly scrutinized setting raises doubts about the authenticity of the answers from these women.、Um, these women. I I don't think these women can freely say what's on their mind in that kind of setting. Yellen made one comment, uh, uh, saying that、uh, while the U.S. I'm, I'm reading this quote, which was posted on 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 social media. It says that she said, "This is her words." While the U.S. has differences with the Chinese government, these are not disagreements with the Chinese people. Some Chinese netizens question her. And they ask, "Who represent the Chinese people in Yellen's lunch or in at your lunch? Who are who are who are the people that represent China? You know, China or Chinese people." 
who represent, I think this is really just not, not a very good translation. So who, who were representative of the Chinese people at your lunch? Um, some angry Chinese netizens accused Yellen's guests of being American spies, while others criticized the elite status of the women invited to the lunch as, and saying they're not, they have not worked in factories. And I think that, that post, um, the, 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 the one that, that criticized the elite status of these women received a lot of um, comments or echoing. So these comments and questions from the Chinese is very interesting, you know. Um, Jenna Yellen might believe that her meeting with the female economists is her chance to have a dialogue with the Chinese people. And this is consistent with Biden, the Biden administration's China strategy, which is dialogue and open communication while we compete. But none of the nine women can speak their mind or could speak their mind. They can only say what the government endorses. So the Americans aren't getting the values of, of this dialogue because you're not, you're not getting real feedback. <laughs> you're sitting there hearing what the CCP you know, want you to hear. Um, also, the dialogue has brought tremendous pressure on the nine Chinese women, right? And the fact that the you know one was forced to delete her post. Um, so, I wonder if people like them would be interested in any future such dialogue because, I mean, it only cause them trouble, if, you know. Thirdly, the Chinese public doesn't even appreciate Janet Yellen's effort in this dialogue because they see that those invited are the elites who don't represent them. So if you look at from all three, from anyone's perspective, I mean, I mean, the only person who gained from this is the CCP because everything is, uh, is according to its control. Everything uh, rolled out according to its plan. It's under its control. Everyone else didn't get what they want. The American government didn't have a real dialogue. The people who were invited to this dinner were un put under such scrutiny and pressure. And then the Chinese people felt that this dialogue had nothing to do with them. So I think, um, I think as long as the CCP is in power, this type of dialogue is a waste of time. It's a waste of time, money, and energy. I think Jenna Yenna meant well in organizing this lunch. Um, the same is true with Joe Biden's administration's strategy of engaging Beijing in, in dialogues. But the circumstances surrounding this lunch should serve as a perfect example to illustrate why this strategy, this dialogue strategy, would be fruitless and a waste of energy. The Americans will get nothing out of it. Um, the, Chinese pu the Chinese public will be angry and the CCP can still get away with what they want. Um, so I really hope that someone from the State Department or the US government can reevaluate their dialogue strategy after carefully studying the result of Janet Yellen's lunch meeting in Beijing. Um, so that's one point I want to I, I want to I want to raise. So the first controversy is really on the Chinese um, on the Chinese side, right? Um, oh, by the way, the, the Treasury Department issued a statement after the lunch. It says that women's participation in the workforce is one of the major drivers of creating inclusive growth. Um, however, angry Chinese netizens called the attendees of the meeting radical feminists. And of course, we could ignore their comments. I mean, we, we shouldn't take all of their comments seriously, but sometimes you could learn. You could, you know, although these comments are irrational, but you could still get a sense of where they're coming from. And um, I just think that it's ironic that the leftists, Chi the leftist Chinese are calling American leftist agenda radical. 
Isn't that interesting? Okay, so now let's talk about her bow and, or the bow-like gesture. Here I have a picture. Um, this is the picture. I don't think it will earn. I don't think it will earn her the respect she deserves from the Chinese at all. Um, let me explain. Uh, let me explain it this way. If we swap the situation, let's say an older female Chinese minister was on her trip in the United States and made the same gesture and bowed to a younger male American official. The I think the entire Chinese social media would not forgive the Chinese official. It will be hard for her to return to China to face her people. Um, the Chinese would have a hard time accepting an elderly Chinese lady bowing to a younger American man. So what do you think how they will react when it's reversed, right? When they see an, an American older lady bowing to a younger Chinese man. Politically, the nationalist little pings might cheer it, um, and they have. But I don't think many of the Chinese would respect Janet Yellen for doing that. Because culturally, age carries a lot of weight in social protocols in China. Older people are respected in China and have higher precedence over young people in, in social protocol. Younger people are required to show respect to older people. Um, this is similar to the ladies' first protocol in the West. So in the West, it's more gender-oriented, whereas in China, it's age-oriented. Uh, in social settings, women have higher precedence over men, although in professional settings, there's no such rule. So the picture of an older lady bowing to a younger man, this picture we have here, is visually troubling for some Chinese, you know, the good Chinese or the, the, the Chinese who have... Um, who are not who have who are not entirely brainwashed by the by the CCP product propaganda? They will have trouble with this picture because it violated both Western and Chinese social protocol. So, for the more traditional and well-educated Chinese people, Yellen's bow is a is painful to watch and may not earn her the respect she deserves. Sadly, so if I were her advisor, I would tell her not to do so. This is a very common mistake American elite, elites make in dealing with the Chinese. I'm sure Janet Yellen is well-traveled and well-versed in China affairs, Chinese politics, uh, and even Chinese culture. From the food that she ordered in, in Beijing, I think she's, she, she might have been a foodie or somebody who's very familiar with Chinese food. Um, she might think that beha by behaving like this, or she might think that by behaving like the Chinese, she can gain respect from the Chinese. But that's counterproductive. Some Westerners are eager to apply the knowledge they obtained about China, China, or China's protocol in social settings and thought that they would earn more respect from the Chinese when they behave like Chinese. This is a common misconception. An American would gain more respect and trust from the Chinese when he or she behaves like a good and respectable American. The answer may be cruel, but it's true. In today's China, the Chinese don't even respect and trust themselves very much. Why would they trust an American who behaves just like one of them? Of course, I'm not referring to the Westerners who have lived in China for many years and who have sp who have who speak the language and um, and are totally immersed in in the culture. But if you're an American official or an American executive um, doing business in China, please don't try to behave like a Chinese um, on on this kind of business trip on, on this official trip. Instead, you should set an example to be a good American in front of the Chinese. You will gain more respect from both the Chinese and the Americans. 
if you try to behave like the Chinese and yet you're not, um, Americans won't like you and the Chinese will think you are weird and, you're, and, and are funny and may laugh at you. I have seen over the years, I have seen many Western people, particularly the, the well-educated Westerners and the Western elites, making this really, really unnecessary mistake when dealing with the Chinese because they're eager to apply the knowledge they have about Chinese protocol. You know, they feel like they, they know how to deal with the Chinese and they are eager to apply this and it's just not serving them well. Although the Chinese won't tell you. Um, and so I have witnessed that over and over again. I witnessed that again in Janet Yellen's trip. I do not think many China experts or China advisors have recognized this problem, or even if they might have, they don't tell Westerners, you know, that this mistake. So I think my advice is worth a million dollars. So I'm telling you, don't, you don't need to do that. And the other reason is culturally, the Chinese think that nobody can really be Chinese. Um, I'm not saying this trying to put down the Chinese. I think Chinese are very proud of their culture. They just don't, do not believe that um, somebody else can, can truly be a Chinese unless you've lived in China for many years, you speak the language that, that you know, I mean, when you truly, they can tell when, whether or not you, you really understand the culture or, 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 or behave or communicate or interact like one of them. Uh, until that happens, they do not see you as a Chinese. So you may as well just earn their respect by being a true American. So that's what I wanted to talk about tonight. <laughs> I hope it's relevant. All right, let me see if people have questions for me. All right, let me go through the super chats. Okay, from Charles Womack. Like with the downturn of the Chinese economy, what would be the first to be cut? The PLA or the MSS? You think they will be cut? No. What would be the first to cut? Chinese people's benefits. You know, for a, for a communist, for authoritarian regime, they would never cut the military. They would never cut its security, um, security personnel. They will cut people's benefits. They will cut people's salary, salaries. Sorry. All right. Um, let's see. All right. Let me see if people have questions. If you do, put um, from Martin Doyle. Love your mind, Lee. You're brilliant. Um, I don't think. I think any true China experts who are unbiased about which side you want to help, I truly want to help both sides. I think I'm, um, I love um, Americans as much as I love the Chinese, and I really want both sides to do well. Um, so I'm not afraid to 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 speak to tell you what, what's really happening, you know, on the other side. Um, I remember, so I don't think it has anything to do with being smart or brilliant. I think it's just, um, it's a matter of, do you really care about both people, you know, both the Chinese and the Americans and not be afraid to speak up? I think that's, that's the issue. Anyways, um, there are a lot of smart people in the world. They are smarter than me. Um, okay, Silas Larson's Yellen lived with her husband in China briefly in the 90s. She probably picked up her bad habits then. Haven't, haven't the norms in China changed? Yeah, changed it. I think that's really the, the problem. I mean, I, you know, the other person that came to my mind that makes similar really bad judgment is... George Bush Sr. He was the first, he was not the ambassador, he was the first um, kind of a, 
uh, like the representative. It was before China and U.S. formally established dip diplomatic relations. She was a representative of the United States living in China for a number of years. And so she, he, he made a lot of friends with the CCP leaders. So in a way, he, th he thought that he really knew how to deal with the Chinese. But unfortunately, that knowledge did not serve him well. Look at you know, the bad decisions he made um, post the Tiananmen Square massacre in 1989. Right, he secretly he sent he wrote letters to Deng Xiaoping, reassuring him, reassuring Deng Xiaoping, who had opened fire on 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 the students. Um, the the leader of the free world, the president of the of the United States, sent letters to the man who opened fire on innocent students, reassuring him that the United States would not cut ties with China. And he even sent uh, his secretary of state, his uh, representative secretly to visit Deng Xiaoping during that summer. I think the reason behind that is he thought that he knew how to deal with the Chinese. Um, but that if he really behaved like a true American, um, it, I think the world we see today may be different. So those experience, China experience and knowledge, um, from my observation, unfortunately, in the past 30 years, did not serve the West well. If any Western organizations, and if you look at Western organizations and companies who have relied on, quote unquote, certain China experts to give them advice, but what, what have their advices given us? What have their advices contributed to the world? These advisors have not given truly unbiased advices to the West. Um, and this has caused the CCP to have the chance to take an advantage of the world, of the free world. So um, maybe you should hire people who don't have much China experience to be your China advisor, you may get better results. That's what I say in this world, the outsiders always lead the insiders, the amateurs. Uh, if you have amateurs lead the professionals, you may have a better, a better chance winning. Um, so anyways. All right. Um, Okay, I don't see any other questions. All right. Um, from PA Bis, what's going on inside Chinese propaganda news regarding Russia's coup attempt, the war, etc.? Is it completely out of the news there? Um, I think the Chinese is now getting a little nervous about what to say about Russia. It looks like the 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 Russian the sign of Russian relations isn't doing too well, isn't going too well. Um, so I mean that's the. I think the Chinese is, I think Xi Jinping would cut the tie, cut the tie ties with the Russians, anytime. Um, you know, Vladimir Putin falls from power. I think the Chinese would just, you know, start all over again. So um, I have not really seen a whole lot discussion about the the prop Chinese propaganda on Russia. I think the CCP is very careful. Um, they're watching what's happening in Russia very carefully. Um, from P Pablo Skates, talk... The standard of social services are so low already. I don't think cutting this is really going to make citizens that disgruntled. Or am I wrong? I don't think cutting this is really going to make... I think the social services are so low already. I don't think cutting this is really going to make citizens that disgruntled. You're right. Um, but when I say cutting social services are like... Um, the benefits for the retirees, for their medical benefits. I mean, it's already so low. Um, 
you're right. I mean, this, the social service is already so low. Um, but what I mean is like the, the salaries, people's pay, um, pe people's pay are being cut. Yeah. Um, the, the, the people living at the bottom social strata, their social benefits, their benefits are non-existent, right? What I'm talking about is the, the, the certain, there's a, a group of Chinese who, like the, the public servants, the people who work for the government, um, or people who work in the, in the um, yeah, who, like teachers, right? People who work in the government uh, or SOEs. These people enjoy relatively well-served benefits. They had good benefits. But if the benefits for these people um, are removed, then you add in another layer of social instability on top of the, the bottom strata, right? So, the, so, the, so you have more and more layers of um, Chinese society who become disgruntled, and that's extremely dangerous. So... Uh, from Jeff Ramos, seems like she's bowing, no? Um, I think she is. But depending on who you talk to, um, you should watch the video. You should definitely watch the video to, 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 to say, I think she is. But there are Chinese say, ah, maybe somebody just always greet people like that. But it's just not, it's not very, it's just not very, it's not right when you represent your country. Um, no one on a, in a professional setting should greet a Chinese like this, right? It, it, particularly, um, you're American. This is not your culture. Bowing is not part of your social etiquette that you should not behave like this at all. Um, so. All right. Um, that's, that's all. I think that's all. Thank you very much for, oh, somebody, somebody asked me a que this question at the last live stream. They asked me if, <laughs> they asked me if you were elected the president of China, what would you do? What would the first thing you would do? I would say the first thing I would do, if the CCP is still around, I would, you know, end the CCP. But I think if I were <laughs> elected the, the president of China, CCP is already, uh, would be already history. So that's irrelevant. So the first thing I would do is to restore traditional Chinese culture in China and help Chinese rediscover their own cultural heritage. This is the saddest thing. Um, you have a whole nation. You have the people, you know, one billion people who, who are disconnected from their own cultural heritage. So I, th I think history books would have to be rewritten because the history that the Chinese people are learning now is the distorted history. Um, just like the progressive in this country uh, who are trying to change American history. I mean, the CCP in China have changed the Chinese history. So the history Chinese people are learning are, are, um, is not the real Chinese history. So history books need to be rewritten um, Ch Chinese people would have to, you know, through a period of time, rediscover their own cultural heritage. Um, and, and I think without that, the, the, the country would not thrive. No matter, you know, because people need to, the, the foundation of a civilized society, uh, the foundation of a civilized and a prosperous society um, is a good value system. Um, and then that comes, that comes from its culture. And then the Chinese, Chinese culture is really what the Chinese people are proud of, but then they don't even know what that is. They just know they're proud of their culture. But if you ask them, well, what's, what, what are you proud of? I mean, they just talk about the phenomena of Chinese culture, which is what the Chinese medicine, martial arts, Chinese food, but these are really the phenomena. We ask, talk, we ask them, what's the essence of Chinese culture? They, they don't really know a whole lot. So that would be the first thing um, that I would do. <laughs> so, 
All right. Well, thank you for the chance. Whoever asked that question, thank you for the chance for me to answer this question. It's a great question. All right. I think I reached the end of this discussion. Oh, I have a, a super quest, super, um, super chat question from that silencer. That silencer. Hello. Well, thank you for the donation. Speaking, Mandarin should be a hard prerequisite for any diplomat visiting China. The first time I visited Sichuan, I was actually had an intermediate level. Cheers! Oh, that's quite good. Mandarin should be a hard prerequisite for any diplomat visiting China. The first time. Um. Yeah, I think if if the diplomat if the diplomat speak Chinese, I think that's great. But if not. I don't think it's required, you know. I don't think it's necessarily required. I mean, it's preferred, but if you don't speak, if a diplomat, if our American officials do not speak Chinese at all, I think they could still accomplish their mission as long as they have good interpreter. They absolutely need to have great interpreter, interpreters, and、um, yeah, and that's extremely valuable. So, all right. Well, travel with love. A greeting from California. Well, thank you, thank you. Happy Tuesday. All right. I think that seems to be all.、Um, it's Tuesday night, so I'll end it earlier, and、um, throw it out there from Volk. Could China join NATO? Would NATO accept China? I don't think so. The question isn't the fentanyl production in China going to inadvertently spill over into the domestic market, especially as the economy gets worse. Feels like a, lo- a lose lose for both sides. It's hard to say because the control, the CCP obviously understands the danger of fentanyl. Excuse me, on its citizens, so it will exercise absolute control over fentanyl to prevent its people from having access to it. So you may not, yeah, you may not see that see that problem as widespread as the United States, precisely because of CCP's control, extreme control. All right, that's all for tonight. Thank you very much for joining me. And I'll see you later. Bye bye.